Jadi saya ada biasa berganti pihak bet Nadim Kiswani dan Emily Austin. I'm joined by my pack now, the founder of Within Our Lifetime, Nadine Kiswani, and the broadcaster and journalist, Emily Austin. Okay, Emily, what did you make of that exchange I just had with Loki? I just dislike how you ask a clear, <laughs> clear-cut question, and the question never seems to be addressed on any of your interviews, quite frankly. It seems like they use the airtime as an opportunity to deny the question and just spread their own narrative, and it just, it's, it's pointless. The debate is pointless. It's, it's a one-sided conversation, and there's no actual conversation. It's, here's my question. What? Question. Oh, but what about this pin? Right. I mean, Nadine, my problem with it was I, I've interviewed some pro-Palestinian voices in the last few weeks who were emphatic immediately. Let me make it clear. What happened on October, want to condemn the October, 7th. October the 7th was a disgusting attack, an abomination. And then they go on to and talk If you can agree on that one, I mean, I don't know what to tell about the plight of the Palestinian people and maybe the historical conflict and so on. And I have great respect for people that do that. I've got to say, I really struggle with anyone who just cannot have the humanity to start by saying what happened on October the 7th was appalling, an outrage. Do you feel it was? I think Palestinians are tired of that being the starting point constantly, when right now there are 6,000 Palestinians who have been in Gaza, over 2,500 of them children. He should probably discuss the solutions then. Mosques leveled, hospitals leveled, so we're tired of that being the, the main goal of the conversation. It's not the main goal. Part of it. It's the starting point of this war. Yeah, but hang on, it's the starting point of this war. Outside it's not the main goal of what I want the conversation to be. The starting point was when 750,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed, were expelled from their homelands uh, during the Nakba, which my, the Nakba? which my grandparents, which my grandparents fled. I don't think talking about uh, that. Palestine because of the Nakba, because of the massacres and the ethnic cleansing that they heard. So to me, that's the starting point. That's my experience. Let's go with that for a minute. Let's start with the Nakba because the only Nakba is the part that people forget to address. 1948, after the partition plan, the Jewish state called in the Arabs to live prosperously and peacefully in the land. But what happened the very next day, not even 24 hours later, is the alleged Nakba, where the Arab leagues declared war on the Jewish state that we just agreed to have our two state solution. And what did they tell their people? Leave the state. Let us get the land back. Let's ethnically cleanse the Jewish people. And once we defeat them in the this war, you will come back to the land. So the only Nakba was a catastrophe that you guys, the Arab League, waged a war that you could not win, and that is why, I'm sorry, your grandparents had to leave their home. That's completely ahistorical. I don't represent the Arab League. I'm Palestinian, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Palestinians. But why do you find it hard to just start, given this war, this latest war that's erupted, began with a terror attack on October the 7th, why is it hard to not just say, that was terrible. I don't see you asking Regev if he condemned the slaughter of innocent civilians. She can't do it, can you? No, she can't because she's the same woman who <sighs> said every Zionist before they die. She, she can't do it. Pop, pop before they die. So she probably agrees with the massacre. So why would she condemn them? I think we're the media is part of manufacturing consent. We're talking about you. I'm speaking here and I don't, I'm not interested. It comes to people. And speaking to gender deniers. The media is manufacturing consent against the Palestinian people just like they did with the lie of the weapons of mass destruction that was used to justify the of over a million Iraqis, and there's been many lies that have been repeated all over the news, including on your show, where CNN had to rescind, and even you said in subsequent interviews about the 40 babies. I haven't no, seen it, a single shred. Of, on, I have not seen a single shred of evidence about these accusations coming out. I was on actually, I was actually are, deliberately misquoted. You raised an interesting point there about this issue of babies from the October 7th terror attack. I was accused by Bassem Youssef of saying on air that 40 babies. I never said that. I said there were reports you never said that. that 40 babies had been killed and that some had been that appears to have been borne out by uh, other reporting. But I haven't seen the full statement. I mean, I the full I mean. details of every single casualty. So I don't know for sure. I certainly never said 40 babies. But that clip has gone around the world and I've been bombarded with abuse based on an absolute lie. I don't and what see makes a big difference between saying 40 babies were being versus maybe, uh, you know, 40 some, were some. You don't think it was in 40 and some? Because at the same, that's, that's we, the we know, that's being used. We know 6,000 Palestinians in Gaza right well, okay, now. Okay, well, let me ask Emily. Right, let me ask Emily. Emily, in this period we are now. I've asked uh, Nadine, can she say she was horrified by what happened? Well, she wasn't. Was, and and she, she will not say that, which I think is very disappointing. Would you, in return, when you look at what's been happening in Gaza in the last two weeks, do you find that appalling, that the loss of young lives, of babies, of children, of women, innocent people who had nothing to do with the terror attacks? Absolutely, 100%. Any death of innocent civilians should be condemned privately and publicly, and I cannot believe I have to say that. So yes, every children that is being collateral damage, every woman, 
that's becoming collateral damage, my heart aches for them. Like, like, and the old man is cooked up in the head, I guess. Why don't you do that? I think we all agree that the loss of innocent life is sad, but I believe that the loss of innocent life wouldn't be an issue. It's okay. Israel it's didn't ethnically ex cleanse Palestine to begin with in 1948. Well, they did, and that's that is the source yeah, of this. I, to me, I go to the source of the yes, issue. But what that happened on October 7th isn't the beginning no, of, of what Palestine but had you asked me, been okay, but no, she's stuck in the past. Ask me. That's what, not the starting point. Why don't you ask me what do I think of that? You have a lot of preconceived views of what you think I think. I agree with you. I think the displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians in 1948 is the root cause of all of this. Well, you can thank the Arab Leagues for declaring war on the there are, solution. There are they myriad people at fault in the next we 70 years. We were ethnically years. cleansed from our land. Why? It's not like Jewish people were ethnically Why? cleansed from the land of Palestine. The they Catholic? colonized it from other Why? people. I'm my... actually discussing with him. I refuse to speak. I deny well, it. That, I refuse to speak to genocide. She's not a genocide denier. She's not. Do you know the definition Jesus of genocide? Is... No, I do know the definition. Gaza currently is a concentration camp. No, it is because not. the Palestinians You think Hamas wages genocide? I believe that, look at the numbers, look at the Palestinians who have Hamas, been killed. Hamas is stated We're not here to talk about any is to eradicate entities. the people, the Jewish people. I don't that's know who she's talking to anymore. Stated purpose. The first thing that we should be that's fighting that's literally for is for Palestinians to be returned to, home Nadine, to their homeland. That is literally, talk about the specific Hamas's political stated entities. purpose is literally the def definition of genocide. It's wiping out people based the on their ethnicity. The hostages who were released had other wise to say. Oh, it's two out of 250, let's applaud Hamas. Let, you can't, okay. The hostages that Israel didn't even want to take to begin with. They didn't even want to take them back. But they did take them. The Palestinians need to divorce themselves. They bomb Gaza, as they bomb Gaza, risking their own be, hostages. Speaking, they don't care Palestine about killing Palestine. needs to be liberated from Hamas because when your governing body is a organization, that is the root of the problem. Not the, the alleged okay, ethnic well, cleansing. The ethnic cleansing of Palestine happened decades, decades before Hamas was even created. Let me ask you a question. Exactly Let me ask you a question. Do you think that Hamas should stay in power in Gaza? I'm not here to talk about political question. organizations. No, I don't care about these questions because my people are being ethnically cleansed. Because my I see the faces of 2,500 Palestinian children yes. on social media every day having chemical weapons against them. So this is going to be my priority on this show, just like any Palestinian around the world is speaking up for our you country. Will also, you will also stop using babies as human shields. Stop it's the most densely populated region in, in the world. Yeah, but you will also know, 2.3 million Palestinians, Nadine, respond, half of them are homeless. Let me respond to you. This is a ridiculous let me argument. To you. My question is whether you think it is good for the Palestinian people that Hamas stay in charge, given the scale of the terror attacks they carried out, given the inevitable response that's come from Israel. Probably would say yes. The inevitable loss of Palestinian lives, given the displacement now of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians out of the north of Gaza into the south, and who knows what's going to happen. The devastation to Gaza and to Gazan people has been unbelievable and yet entirely predictable once Hamas decided to carry out the terror attack on the scale they did. I simply ask you, do you, do you think that's a good thing for Palestine? It's not predictable that there will continue to be resistance to oppression as long as apartheid, occupation, ethnic cleansing, genocide continues to exist. Whether Hamas exists or not is an irrelevant question. Because as long as oppression against the Palestine, Palestinian people how can exists, you end, we will How can you end that oppression, as you see it, and many would agree with you? Why don't we address the oppression first? She called Israel an apartheid mm. state, so I'd like to just define what apartheid is. It is segregation, like what South Africa is facing, but the alleged apartheid is because Israel set up security measures after the numerous uh, bus in 2000 and set up checkpoints, which they got very insulted by. But it's the same way that airports now require security after reasonably so. So it is taking security precautions. Secondly, we have three Arabs, and if I'm not mistaken, Muslims currently sitting in the Knesset. Does that sound like apartheid Let to you? Let me quote the they Israeli defense Israeli minister Arab and how they right. view Palestinians. He said that we are fighting against human animals, that our soldiers will not be accountable for anything. There will be no fuel, no food, no water, and Gaza will... It ceased to exist. This is what Yoav Gallant, the Israeli defense minister, has said. This is how they refer to Yeah, I think one of the big problems, I think, this has is been, I think one of the big problems leading up to this has been... That's not apartheid. That's well, let me just say what I think. That's the language of let me say, beyond let me just, apartheid. Let me make the point I want to make, which is I think one of the problems leading up to this is that Benjamin Netanyahu, for political expediency to remain in power, has packed his cabinet with a bunch of right-wing headbangers whose rhetoric actually was incredibly incendiary and incredibly unhelpful. So I do think that. Actually. And you're, you know what? Even if you're right, unfortunately, the the narrative that it's about the land. I'm sorry, the Hebron in 1927, 1929. That was not about Israel. It is about the murder of Jews all over the world. National Jihad Day that I had to worry about being in Manhattan last Friday was not about. You Israel. mean the day where we it had a protest where Hamas thousands of New Yorkers charter, came out? That's not a national day of jihad. We're talking about. Yes, about the discussion solution now. Not that uh, yes, about. All right. For her life in America. What? A six-year-old Palestinian boy. And a Chicago. Week, you want to compare that was, a times. was appalling. 26 times. You're talking rabbi. about being afraid for your life. I can say, I'm constantly afraid for my life. I can as a say, I can say to those examples you just gave, they are appalling. Appalling. But I also find it very dispiriting that you can't just take a moment to say what happened to the people in Israel on October the 7th was also appalling. But it came out of her mouth. She wants the Zionists dead, so how is she supposed to condemn it?
It would not have happened had Israel not initiated this, and you know this from the beginning. I think we always Israel did nothing yes, that warranted did. what happened on October the 7th. Nothing. Is I think the Hamas did it first. Israel? Nothing. The scale of that terror attack is like saying that America brought on itself. Is I remember people saying that in the streets afterwards. I think she and that was equally, and that was equally, equally repellent. What Hamas did that day was unconscionable. We have Anyone no state, with an no ounce of humanity no has to say Anything that. Anything that Palestinians do to defend themselves will always be categorized attack because this I is the position that the world has put us right, in. I'm final not point responding to, to your questions. I, I have a question. When was the last questions. time Palestine had full sovereignty over the land? Give me a date or even a year that Palestine had their own I'm not government. going to engage with genocide denials. If you want to make a point, you can for me, say that. She wants to be a child. How are you an attorney? God. Can you ask her when did Palestine have full sovereignty over the land? When did I'm not Palestine here to talk about when did full sovereignty. Oh, I see that you're taking your talking points from her. Well, you don't want to talk to me. He has to do it. Do you want to answer me? It's a lot of voices. And stop being a child? If you have a Jew in court, are you not going to represent them as an attorney? This has nothing to do with Jewish people. We actually have Jewish people protesting on the streets of New York City. Yeah, hang on. And of Palestine Palestine on okay, let's not all shout over each other, but it has everything to do with Jewish people when Hamas's stated intent is to wipe Jewish people off the face of I'm the earth. I'm not the spokesperson of Hamas. No, but I don't you should know be able to say that wrong. This conversation, that's all you're talking because about. You're no, I'm here to flip the narrative and make sure you know that people why we're know all that this government is funding Israel to the tune of $10 million a day, $3 right. million a year, and they're asking for an additional $14 billion in aid. Okay. The bombs that are being manufactured by U.S. companies are what's being dropped on Gaza. The world is watching it happening and is not doing anything Biden about it. So the most important thing for me okay, to do right to... now is to stop okay. and, and questions question. about Hamas are not going to do that. Okay. It's condemning it's the, the genocide of the Palestinian, Palestinian people and condemning the UK Nadine. and US government Nadine. that we live under, that I pay taxes to, Nadine. that are Palestinian people every day. And you want to... The situation even lived there. Said that Gaza would be unlivable by 2020. Mm -hmm. The UN had already said uh, that most of the uh, that, that most of the hospitals. Um, is in in America, Vietnam, government. Yeah. At least two thirds of the healthcare facilities um, are not being able to provide. Today, yeah. yeah, are not able to. I think function. it's wrong. So it's I think not it's just wrong the today. airstrikes and the missiles that are going to kill uh, people. The siege and blockade has been people. But you should and be able, Nadine, people. You should be able to say that that is all wrong, which I believe it is wrong, and you should also be able to say that what happened on October the seventh was wrong. A human, a human wrong, being who cares the equally about, about the lives of all human beings would be able to say that those, I do those care those about things the are lives wrong. of all human beings equally, and that's why exactly I believe okay. that in order to preserve human life, you must end the siege on Gaza, okay. you must end the blockade, you must end the settler colonization of Palestine. Listen, listen. It's a, it's Free a, Palestine from Hamas. It's absolutely. a passionate, it's a passionate debate, and I understand why emotions run high. I appreciate you both coming in. Thank you very much indeed. Come back. Let's continue the debate. We only get, you only get to peace in these things. I can promise you by thrashing these things out. People that hate each other have to come together and they have to try and find nice more places of compromise. Otherwise, you never get to peace. 70 years this has been going on. 70 years. You need justice to get peace. You need no, justice number two. and you need compromise and you need both sides to acknowledge when bad things happen, you can say that is unacceptable. Okay. On October the yes. 7th, any time you that, says, that was not was that was acceptable, or there's a reason. Bigger conversation, I guess. But thank you for coming in. I appreciate it.